Bum 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 Hey everybody Come on in Oh you know what? We're not taking questions because I forgot to push the button that allows me to take questions. So this is gonna be the world's shortest periscope. But probably the best. Yeah, it's probably gonna be the best. Because on days like this, when you start them with a simultaneous sip, well, what could go wrong? Nothing. Nothing. And all you need for the simultaneous sip is a cup or a mug or a glass, a tank or chalice or stein, a canteen jug or flask, a vessel of any kind. Fill it with your favorite beverage. I like coffee. And join me now for the unparalleled pleasure of the dopamine hit of the day, the thing that makes everything better, the simultaneous sip. Go. Mmm. Tastes like Russian interference. And by that I mean spicy. So, uh, is it my imagination or have Democrats just given up? Have they given up? Is there anybody in the professional Democrat um, world who is saying to themselves, We've got that president now with our strong candidates and our policies and whatnot. I'm not sure anybody's saying that, are they? It feels like maybe nobody's saying that. So, just to keep things interesting, what would be the one thing you would want most after Russia collusion and after the Ukraine perfect letter? What what kind of story could be hatched in a situation in which you realize that none of your Democrat candidates have any chance whatsoever against the sitting president who is crushing it. And the longer they compete against each other, the more obvious it is that whatever Trump does is better. Because <laughs> you're, watching, you're watching the Democrats uh, debate and you're just thinking to yourself, why are their light bulbs so dim? Why are they so relatively uninteresting? What is wrong with all these people? And the answer is, well, you're comparing them to Trump. And it's easy, it's easy because of all the controversy and stuff to forget just how talented he is. You know, it's easy to lose that because we're arguing about other stuff. But once you see talent to talent, you know, which you do when you see the Democrats debate, you see them in that in that pure political mode, and you compare that to what we've been watching with Trump, and it just it just disappears in boringness. All right. So what would you do if you were the Democrat-oriented ruling class or wanted to be? You're not ruling as much as you'd like to, but you'd like to be ruling. What would you do? You would you would have another plot, another conspiracy theory all lined up, right? Ready to go. But what if, let me just put this out here, okay? What if you'd made the following mistake? What if you had hatched up a plan, sort of a a last resort plan to get rid of President Trump, but you hatched it up before you knew that Bernie Sanders was had, had a dominant position in the Democratic primary. Because if you knew that Bernie Sanders was the likely candidate to, to match up with Trump, would you have hatched up the following plot that goes like this? If you followed the news yesterday, you know that the New York Times broke another story. They've got leaks, leakers, I say, leakers who say, who tell us that there were, uh, let's see, some briefers in the intelligence community briefed members of con- Congress, including Adam Schiff. Yes, that Adam Schiff. And he was briefed amo- along with other members of Congress, but not the president. He wasn't in the room. I think he found out about it later. And what the briefer said was that Russia is at it again. Oh, yeah, they're at it again. And not only are they at it again, they're hacking, they're trying to do stuff on social media again. Again, say our best and brightest, completely credible intelligence services. They're at it again. 
But here's the best part. Here's the best part. Why are they at it again? Do you know why Russia is hacking and using social media and maybe trying to break into the election machines themselves? Do you know why they're doing it? Well, if you don't, then you're not in our intelligence services because our intelligence services have informed this small group of Congress people that it's because they'd like to see President Trump get reelected. Now, do you see the problem yet? Because the people who thought up this new conspiracy theory, they don't see the problem or they might have held this one back. Do you see it yet? <laughs> this was a plot that you come up with before Bernie Sanders is the alternative. Because the, the people trying to sell you this plot, you know, this new conspiracy theory, the people trying to sell this to you, they didn't realize that this was the plot you have held back in case it's not Bernie Sanders. Because if it looks like it's probably Bernie... And, and certainly you would sort of hold back and wait a little bit because it looks like it probably is, you would say to yourself, are we so sure that President Trump is the best person that we would like, we Russians, let's say, would like in the White House versus Bernie Sanders? So the, the pranksters who bring us this latest hoax, they forgot something. <laughs> the the most important part of the hoax is the why. Why would they do it? And they wouldn't do it if Bernie Sanders is in this commanding position or even looks like he's you know in the top two. You'd hold back because is there anybody on this periscope or any indeed anyone in the world who doesn't believe that Russia prefers Bernie Sanders as the president of the United States? Are you are you kidding me? There's not any chance that Russia prefers Trump over Bernie. So you can see that there's a mismatch between this new fake news conspiracy theory and the obvious reality that Russia would never make that choice. It just couldn't happen. So, uh, and then, so what does President Trump do? when he finds out that his uh, briefers, his own intelligence people, have briefed Congress, including Adam Schiff, sworn enemy to the president, and told him exactly what Adam Schiff would want to hear more than anything else. Let me tell you that when Adam Schiff heard this, uh, I, I think there was a laundry problem, is what I'm saying. I think that Adam Schiff was happier than than a that a man should ever be. And he probably just said, and I'm going to do an impression now of Adam Schiff hearing the news from the intelligence agencies, Trump's own intelligence agency, that the Russians are interfering on behalf of Trump. Here is my impression of Adam Schiff hearing that news. Oh, 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 Well, back to work. Time to impeach. But it gets better. What did the president do? He fired the head of the intelligence agencies, replaced him with uh, Grinnell, ambassador from uh, Germany, in a temporary way. So it's a temporary spot. Somebody else will presumably be picked as the new head. Now, does that seem like that's just more proof for Schiff proof, I say, that the president must be liking this Russian interference. He must be trying to throw the election, too. He must be working with Putin because he fired the messenger. The messenger who came in and said that Russia prefers you over Bernie Sanders. I would like to present to you now a one-act play in which the president of the United States, who will be played by me, is learning for the first time 
about this news that our intelligence agencies say that Russia is once again interfering on his behalf. His being me, because I'll be playing the president. I'll also be playing the part of Dale. Dale will be informing me as the president of this sad news. Mr. President, Mr. President, we have serious and dire news. It's very dark, it's very, it's very solemn, and it's very serious. And it seems that the Russians, led by Putin, Putin, you know him, he's your best friend, Putin is a rascal and a rapscallion, and it seems that they are up to their old tricks again, and we have caught them red-handed, hacking away into our, into our voting machines and, and trying to rig our social media. They're buying ads, yes, ads, memes, memes, I say, they're buying memes, and it's all designed to, to help you get reelected because Putin's your, your best friend. <clears throat> um, Dale, can you, st did I hear that wrong? Well, what am I missing here? I'm, I'm a little confused. You said that Russia is trying to help me get elected. You said help me get reelected by doing the worst thing that they could possibly do in exactly the way they got caught last time and therefore they know that we can catch them. So they're doing the worst thing that they could possibly do. Is, is that what you're telling me, Dale? The worst thing they could do is try to help me when I already have a commanding position and I'm going to win on my own and I'm probably going to be running against a communist? Is that what you tell me? Democratic socialists, not a communist. You know what I mean. Well, yes, so it's quite obvious that Putin loves you and he's trying to interfere on your behalf. Um, it's QED, very logical. Um, that's what I would do, KGB. Dale, that doesn't make, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, if, if Putin wanted to help me, President Trump, get reelected, the best thing he could do is nothing. Don't you think he knows that? Or are you suggesting that Putin has an IQ of, what, 65? Well, you bring up a good point. We've never studied his IQ, but um, it's obvious that uh, all Russians love Donald Trump, and Donald Trump loves all Russians. Why are you such a traitor? Dale, do you work for me? I'm not sure. Well, you're fired. Get the hell out of my office. And uh, I think I'm going to look around in my administration and see if I can find anybody who can, who can answer this question. This will be the test of your IQ to see if you could be the head of the U.S. intelligence services. One, just one question. Uh, give me an ambassador, any, any ambassador, uh, Grinnell, he's fine, yeah, let, and ask him this question. Ambassador Grinnell, do you think that Putin is trying to help President Trump get reelected by doing the one most obvious worst thing he could ever do to get President Trump reelected, but also doing it in a way that virtually guarantees being caught. And Ambassador Grinnell would sit back and say, um, that doesn't make any sense. If Putin wanted you to get reelected, he would just stay out of it because it looks like it's heading that way. Well, you got the job. I guess, I guess now you're the head of all of our intelligence agencies because there wasn't one of those dumb fuckers who could figure that out. And, and let, me, let me say this. You may know that I wrote a book called Loser Think. It's up there on the shelf. It's a great book. You should get it. It's available everywhere books are sold. And one of the points in that book is that one example of loser think that you see all the time is mind reading. Mind reading. Um, and this is one of those examples because apparently there's some disagreement about what Putin is. Wait for it. There's some disagreement about what Putin is literally thinking. Literally. What he's thinking. Because... Uh, apparently, somebody in the administration, the Trump administration, countered the idea that um, it's obvious that uh, Putin is interfering on behalf of Trump, 
And uh, this person who is unnamed says, a quote, a more reasonable interpretation of the intelligence is not that they have a preference, meaning a preference for Trump. It's a step short of that. It's more that they understand the president is someone they can work with. He's a deal maker, but not that they prefer him over Bernie Sanders or Pete Buttigieg or anyone else. So it may have been mischaracterized by Shelby, the intelligence official. Now, that is literally a difference in mind reading. Now, I think the Trump administration is, is making the, the less mind reading case, which is to say what we have is evidence that they're doing stuff. What we don't have is knowledge of what they're thinking. <laughs> right? So since one of their intentions is, is just to mess with our system, it's alleged. So it's alleged that one of the things that um, Putin wants to do is just make our system seem less stable. Um, uh, <clears throat> I would like to go on record as saying <clears throat> maybe, maybe that's true. But it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I don't, I don't quite understand why they would do that. It just seems like a, a dumb thing to do risk-reward-wise. But anyway, let's say it is. Uh, let's say they are doing that. Um, but why? Why would they do that when they don't even know for sure who the other person running is? Uh, anyway, so it doesn't make any sense. So Schiff now has a, a new cause. I guess you will probably want to impeach again, and this will be a big story. But it all comes down to this interpretation. And I would say that a reasonable interpretation is that they know that they can work with Trump, but he's got some, you know, he's got a, a rough side, meaning he gave lethal aid to Ukraine. That's a pretty rough side, right? Meaning that he would take away all their natural gas business if he has a chance, and he probably would make a chance to do that. So, so Trump could cost them a lot of money. Right? Trump is an expensive president, but I think it is also true that they think they can work with him, because they have. So is that the same as saying they prefer him over Bernie, who would probably let them do whatever they wanted? I don't think so. I think Russia would prefer Bernie, wouldn't they? Wouldn't you? But in any case, in any case we can't read their mind, and that's the problem. The president fired the head of intelligence for mind reading. That's actually what happened. The president fired the head of his intelligence agency for essentially putting an interpretation on Putin's inner thoughts. And it's not in evidence. I would have fired that person too. Right? I mean, that's a fireable thing. If you cause this much trouble... Uh, and and this trouble is based on an assumption of what a stranger is thinking, and that assumption doesn't even track with the obvious facts, the obvious facts that if Putin were thinking, I want Trump to get elected, he wouldn't be doing this. This is the last thing he'd be doing. It's literally the last thing. If you made a list of 100 things, all the things that Putin would do from the from the top thing he'd do to help get Trump get elected to the bottom thing, the bottom thing, the last thing he'd do was hack in this ham-handed way or do these stupid social media memes again and get caught because they're not going to make much difference, but you could get caught just like last time. So it's literally the last thing he'd do unless he's got an IQ of 65. All right. Um, AOC has some competition from a Democrat. So CNBC anchor, a former CNBC anchor, Michelle Carusa Cabrero is in that district, and she's looking to run against AOC in this year's primary. Now, do you all recognize the name? Do you recognize uh, Michelle Caruso Cabrera? Uh, if you do, you just said to yourself, huh, that's a fair fight, maybe, maybe more than fair, because um, Michelle Caruso Cabrero is not only a uh, seasoned TV personality who has a big following from C CNBC days. Um, I was a fan. Uh, and uh, I met her, I've met her on set, but I uh, didn't know her personally. And um, 
I think she has all the tools because she has the economics and finance um, you know, credentials and credibility <clears throat> running against somebody who's got some uh, pretty aggressive socialist ideas. And the exact per- and let me put it this way. If you were going to start with a blank piece of paper and try to design a candidate to run against AOC, uh, I think it would be Michelle Caruso Cabrera because you'd want a woman, so you don't want somebody who's you know voting because of the gender thing. So you'd want a woman. You'd want somebody who knows more about economics and somebody who has uh, as much or more media skill. Uh, it's, she's sort of exactly what you want. And I would imagine she'd be super well connected to people who could fund her campaign because, again, she was on CNBC. It's the money channel. She probably knows more billionaires than than uh, AOC does. Anyway, just guessing. Um, I was going to take questions, but before you do that, one must push a button before going live. I failed to push that button, and therefore uh, I cannot take questions, but I can take them in your text. So um, let me check something here. Um, All right. Let me see your questions. Uh, Have you been eating some good quality yogurt? Well, I've been eating a lot of yogurt. I don't know if it's good quality. But I was up much of last night in screaming pain again. You know, I'll tell you, I've learned to hate sleeping. (laughs) Because every time I go to sleep, I wake up in a few hours in screaming pain. I don't know what it is. It's only at night. Uh, <clears throat> next book project, not thinking about it yet. Well, I'm thinking about it yet, but nothing to talk about. Um, my story about using hypnosis to prevent getting mugged. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've told that story before. But, uh, well, this, is, this isn't the time for that. Did I see Rolls-Royce nuclear plants? Well, you know, if you follow Mark Schneider, who you should, on all the nuclear stuff... There's a whole bunch of stuff happening, and I get confused with the, the various companies and technologies and stuff. But the nuclear energy field uh, went from winding down to suddenly one of the most dynamic um, industries out there. And a whole bunch of uh, exciting stuff is happening. So I think nuclear energy is just coming on strong. Tips for testosterone in your 50s, somebody asked me. Well, that is an interesting question to ask me. Um, But I'll tell you the obvious. If you get the right sleep and the right diet and reduce your stress and drink water and do all the normal things, your testosterone will be fine. And lifting is good. So if if you've got a good fitness plan, including lifting, and you're sleeping and eating right, you're not drinking a lot of alcohol, that's what you need. It's also good to win. Uh, <laughs> is there an economic benefit to society in a CO2 removal industry? You know what I'm going to predict? You know, there's there's something that might happen that's, that's kind of dangerous. Because uh, I've mocked people who say that if we build these big machines that suck the CO2 out of the atmosphere, that if we were too good at it, the people fear that we would take too much out and the plants would die. And I I laugh and say, no, if the only point of building these things, the only point of it is to get rid of the CO2 to bring down the temperature, then when when you've done that, you'll turn them down or turn them off. And so I've always laughed at that. But there's one scenario in which they don't get turned off, and then we all die. And it goes like this. Uh, And you can see it developing. Some of the companies that can suck the CO2 out of the air, and this is already a thing, a number of you know, it's not hard to suck it out of the air, but then what do you do with it? It's the what do you do with it part that get where people get creative. And apparently there's a lot of chemistry that can be um, applied to it to, to change the, uh, the situation. Now, uh, what happens if somebody breaks the code and makes one of these devices that sucks CO2 out of the air and can turn it into a product 
that you could sell for more than the cost of running the machine. Because we're right on the cusp of that, meaning that we already can take stuff out of the air and we can already turn it into, I think some of the things are plastics or jet fuel. Um, I think those are a couple of things. So there might be other things coming down the, the pike. So what happens if people start buying their own CO2 mining machines? And I'm going to call them mining because they would literally be mining the CO2 out of the air and then turning it into a sellable item. What would happen if we could someday pull the CO2 out of the air, put it through a chemical process, and make it, uh, and make it the, uh, what would you call it, the materials for a 3D printer? so that you could pull stuff out of the air and then print any home goods with it. You could make your dishes by sucking CO2 out of the air and just say, okay, make me a dish. There's a new dish. So that can be dangerous because then you would have to get everybody to turn off their machines and how do you even know who has one? Anyway, uh, I can tell I'm losing my audience and I should because there's not much else going on today. Um, so he says, North Korea is being devastated by coronavirus, but we would never know. You know, that could easily turn it into the biggest story, couldn't it? Um, you know, if North Korea, because are they going to let anybody in to help? Because if they don't, I don't know what the heck they're going to do. Um, yeah, North Korea could be in a, in a world of hurt over there. Now, I did see the first story of somebody who I believe is not, who is neither ethnically uh, Chinese or Asian, who died of the coronavirus. I think it was somebody in Iran who was 40 years old. So they weren't immun, immunocompromised and they weren't Chinese. So it looks like the uh, the virus can, can, you know, can jump and affect other people. We don't know at what rate, because that could also be a one-off. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. Iran has an outbreak right now. Any coup indictments at all? I'm thinking no. You know, I'd love to think that there would be some indictments for the all the essentially the coup attempt against the president, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, you know, logically, if you connected all the dots, you would say to yourself, well, these people did X, and X is against the law, and we caught them, and so logically, connect the dots, they'll be indicted. But I just don't, there's just something about it that makes me think, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. Uh, Taliban peace deal. I don't think there's going to be a Taliban peace deal that works necessarily. But I'm not sure we care, do we? Do we care? Because there's nothing we can do over there to make it better. So we might as well not spend money. I mean, I think at this point it's just a budget question. You know, and reducing our exposure as targets is, of course, even higher, higher priority. But uh, I think we're in, uh, heading in the right direction there. Um <laughs> somebody's asking me about the uh, photo that I tweeted so I tweeted uh, yesterday a photo of uh, me flexing a gigantic arm so I had one arm that's, that's big and one arm that's small now the small arm was holding the camera and the big arm was you know forward you know flexing and, and I said it was a, a deep fake arm <laughs> I just wanted to see what people would say because here, here's the joke it wasn't, uh, the, it wasn't photoshopped. It was my actual arm. But because of the, um, just the angle, uh, just holding my arm in front of my body to flex it made it look unusually large. So, so it was a fake picture, but I didn't, um, I didn't use Photoshop. All I did was take advantage of the fact that what's closer to the camera looks bigger, so it, it was just a fun illusion. But so that's my actual arm, but it's it's not that size. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just a perspective thing. All right, do I own any gold? No, I've never owned gold. Sometimes I get tempted, but I don't know. There, there's just something so irrational about gold. 
that I can't, my, my rational mind can't be irrational enough to act rationally and diversify with gold. I, I just have some kind of rational barrier there. Uh, the New York Times headlines, we need to let the elites decide who governs the U.S. Well, whatever we're doing now is is feeling kind of random. What are my thoughts on Elon Omar's brother marriage scandal? Don't care. Don't care at all. So I try to become, I try to be consistent. You know, if I don't care about Stormy Daniels and I didn't care about Monica Lewinsky, uh, I'm not going to care about Elon Omar's personal life. Now, if any laws were broken, well, let the courts figure that out. You know, if the court decides that there's some something that shouldn't have happened, well, you know, that's why we have laws. I'm just not, just not too engaged in that personal stuff. Um, <laughs> preferred, yeah, you know, I, I see some questions about cannabis. Um, I will tell you that it's the only thing that stops my pain. So, if I may, if I may be blunt, the reason I've been a little, uh, a little out of it in the morning is that literally the only thing that stops the pain, and it's, it's, it's a really bad pain, <laughs> and it lasts a long time. But there's only one thing that will stop it, and it stops it right away. Um, will the summer Tokyo Olympics happen? Oh, that's a good question. I would say that's a that's probably a 50-50 proposition. Um, after Trump, both sides will compete for their citizens. You know, doesn't it feel to you that one of the things that uh, Trump is doing right with the, the black vote is, is there, there's a rule in sales that one of the things you have to do is directly ask, ask for the sale. It sounds kind of weird and obvious, but when people sell, they often forget to ask somebody to buy. So they'll just be describing their product, but at some point you have to say, you know, would you like to purchase this? Can I write up an order? You know, is this the one you want? You need to, you need to, you know, close the sale. Um, Sorry, why did all of your all of your comments suddenly went to that? All right, what was I even talking about? <laughs> uh, I'm glad I don't get embarrassed anymore. Oh, let's talk about the Bernie ad. I'll get back to whatever the hell I was talking about before. So Bernie Sanders has an ad in which there's a. I wish I knew his name, or I'm guessing he might be a, some kind of a pastor or something. But there's a a large African American man who is the most incredible orator who's talking on behalf of Bernie, and uh, they interposed over the the guy's oration. You have know, various inspirational images and stuff, and wow, it was really good. It was really good, and I thought to myself, "Uh oh, that's a little too good." Now. If this had been not primarily based on the talent of this one speaker, who I wish I knew his name, because he's amazing. Um, was, oh, somebody's saying it's Killer Mike. Who is Killer Mike? Uh, people are telling me that's his, I guess that's his, uh, his name is Killer Mike, but I don't know what he is, or is he, uh, he's a rapper? Are you kidding me? My goodness, he's good. Huh. Well, I'm very impressed. So I'm going to actually look into a little bit more of him because, uh, you know, he was talking and it was on behalf of Bernie. But by the time he was done, I was thinking to myself, well, can I vote for that guy? I'll vote for the, I'll vote for the guy who was talking. That guy's great. So, uh, all right, he's an activist and rapper. Well, he's good at both, apparently. So here's what. It, that commercial was somewhat easy to make in the sense that you had this great oration and then they just put pictures to it. So it was a little bit, you know, they were starting with something that was pre-made and, and known to be good. So that doesn't tell you that there's some expertise that has been added, such as Godzilla. Now you know who I mean by Godzilla if you read my book, Win Bigly. It's a nickname I gave to... Um, 
uh, Cialdini, the I would say the uh, oh probably the world's most famous uh, influencer, who I believe worked for Hillary Clinton, and he's I know he and some other influencers worked for Obama. So if there are some Democrat experts on influence, you would expect that they would look they would look to join whichever team emerges from the primaries. If if there are people who believe that it's Bernie and it's already obvious that it's going to be Bernie, you would expect that they would have sometime around now, the professional influencers would have said, you know, hey, uh, I'll be your advisor, and those are the influencers who would make your 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 memes and your tweets and your your ads um, go to a whole new level. But Bernie's ad is already at that level. I mean, that was a Trump-like super powerful ad. But like I say, it might not be the product of, a, of the highest level expertise because it was really based on just that one oration. And if you had that, it would have been obvious what to do with it. So we don't, we don't yet have signs that Bernie has a Godzilla level talent working for him, but I would expect one to join. I would expect that Bernie's persuasion, um, you're going to see a uh, a step jump if he if he gets to the point where everybody just says yeah it's obviously going to be Bernie at that point watch his persuasion just take a, a leap it will be because the experts got involved once they knew who really to back um, all right I'm going to go do something else and I will talk to you later <laughs>